All right. Hello, everyone. We are Zoomsburg, and today we are bringing you the consulting in logging plantation complex in Indonesia. Um, first, I would like to introduce our team members. Our team is composed of Yi Duo Wang, Si Han Zhou, Han Zhong Xu, Yu Fei Tang, and Yi Jing Gao. And today we are representing the Diameter Consulting, which is an independent consulting firm that stands for smallholders. And we conduct responsible and equitable management in natural resources, especially for the Asia emerging economies. And today we're working for our client professorist who support companies, especially the effective collaborations across national governments, NGOs, and the different companies. And our client is extremely pro uh, proficient for capacity building. Uh, both of our consulting firm, our client share the same mission. That is, we believe strongly in the need for balance between humans and nature, and also importance for sustainable development. Next slide, please. Um, I'll introduce the industry overview. So palm oil, the oil type that is more, four times more efficient than normal vegetable oil, is fulfilling about 35% of the world's vegetable oil demand. In order to meet this increasing need, Indonesia is continuing to clear land and establish plantation. In this process, we notice two main challenges. First of all, since slash and burn is the main way of clearing land, there's huge emission through the process. Also, we have noticed the difficulties for local Local farmers to transit into the industry and work sustainably. Since we have um, observed a higher poverty rate inside the original forest than the outside areas. So with our clients aim of eliminating emissions and helping transitions to have positive social outcomes, we have our creative solution, logging plantation complex. Yeah, so since we know like when people want more palm oil, they usually choose to like burn up rainforest for the lands to plant palm oil trees, which can lead to like a vast amount of carbon emission. So we suggest our client to invest money in logging camp. So using the traditional cutting down method to deal with those unavoidable cut down in the forest. And as for this initial capital, uh, we propose three possible uh, capital sources here. Um, so we can ask for like local government or international organizations like United Nations for help, uh, but we know it will be like very hard to compete with tons of NGOs to get enough financial support. So since we know uh, ProForest has effective cooperation with many commodity companies such as Unilever and Mars, who also use lots of palm oil as their raw materials, and we will suggest our client to strive for their investment as well, uh, since our sustainable oil will definitely give those companies positive publicity. And then uh, we also want farm farmers and local residents to participate in logging. So we will then use the profit they make in logging to train their farming scales in return. And by hiring those local residents to work for lo logging, we can tackle the problem of displacing local farmers by creating new jobs and minimize the impact of oil price and fluctuations on farmers' income as well. So, our client ProForest once said that transformation can only happen when people are empowered with the knowledge and skills to plan and implement change. So we really want to encourage our client to invest in farmers. Um, so we can uh, provide the training sessions that is one of the capacity building services that ProForest Pro already have. And we would suggest them to apply this to the local farmers, helping them to like, get plantation certificate that is developed by uh, RSPO, which has like lower cost compared to other certificate, but will definitely help farmers to improve their livelihood largely. And also we can provide tools that help stakeholders to improve production efficiency uh, and also provide courses that uh, teach farmers to defend human rights. Uh, since we know that despite Insta, uh, Indonesia law and the standard for sustainable palm oil production set up by RSPO, uh, illegal land acquisitions still exist. And sometimes protesters request are even ignored that will lead to violence and even uncivil disobedience. That, that is pretty unnecessary. Okay, following what Sihan was just saying, our next phase will be new plantations. The creation of blogging camps allows for the profit of our agency's operation and the training fees for local farmers. 
just to reiterate, the revenue brought by the logo, log sustains for farmer salaries and training fees. We now have a spared area that allows us to plant palm oil trees and make use of local people's training. After absorbing knowledge from our training sessions, local farmers are believed to be more capable in planting palm oil trees, which according to our data will generate more palm oil output and contribute to increased profits. Following the logic, since we have higher yields and higher profit, we could even expand our business in various ways like advancing our logging camp or help other poor farmers in, in those areas. As we expand our business, our ideal model is that we want to gather as many companies as we could in that area. By trying to create such a monopolized social model, we could even tr have a chance to set a price of palm oil trees uh, and to maximize the interest of farmers who are regarded as weak, weak groups. And another thing I need to mention is burn or log. For emptying the land for plantation, local people would either choose to cut those trees down or just burn all the trees. In order to guarantee a high efficiency, they typically choose the latter option, which is burning all the trees down. However, burning all the trees will emit much carbon dioxide into the air, which would intensify the air pollution in their area or even the whole world. We here first look at the right square uh, where we'll see that each hectare of rainforest converted to oil palm monoculture will create 174 tons of carbon emissions. However, we look at the left square, uh, carbon emission of burning trees is 937.6 uh, tons per, per hectare. So it's an easy calculation that uh, it will definitely be worthwhile if we choose to uh, cut down the trees instead of burning them. Uh, so I'm going to introduce uh, the economic feasibility of our proposal. Uh, so the first is the cost revenue analysis. Uh, so you see on the left side, uh, we have several uh, expenses that might pay during our project. So it totals up to 96,000 US dollars per, per year for the construction. While on the right side uh, was the logs price being about 150, uh, US dollars per cubic meter, we could easily calculate it uh, by the above algorithm to have, uh, uh, have learned that uh, the total revenue is about three times uh, greater than the expenses. So that's why, uh, that's uh, how we show the feasibility of our problem. So about our income projections, we split them into year one and year two. For the first year, you, uh, you could notice that the total revenues is much greater than the second year. Since in the first year, we must accumulate uh, a lot of profits for the uh, reinvestment uh, in the construction of uh, expansion or plantation. Uh, while in the second year, we want to decrease the number of trees being cut while double the replanted trees. So there will be more trees uh, than we actually, uh, than that uh, of the year one, where we actually started. So we are bringing more greens to the local community. So about the risk we may facing, uh, there are uh, two major risks. So first is about uh, the global pandemic right now. And the shipping is slower than normal. So there will be more time to wait for the log selling payment. And for the financial risks, uh, during our fundraising, we asked from multiple stakeholders. It is not easy to ensure that the farmers get the revenues they deserve. So about our vision and future uh, plans, uh, our proposal, uh, the projected timelines is listed as, as below. So uh, after fundraising, we start our construction and acquire equipment. Uh, and then we use the revenues accumulated from logging for training and forest rebuild. Uh, we then eventually expand our plantation and we, with local farmers to discuss the second year plan since we know that they are the one who knows about their local um, sustainability the best. And thank you for watching. Thank you, Zoomsburg. We're now going to open up the floor to questions from our judging panel. Um, that'll be five minutes. We'll start the clock now. 
Anne, would you like to go first? Sure, I'll go ahead and start. Um, can you tell me how this will, uh, what your proposal will do, will increase or decrease the inequity between men and women in Indonesia and how will it affect the local populations you're working with? Uh, yeah, I think well, uh, uh, okay. I, I can answer this question first. Uh, just uh, talking about gender gender problem. I don't think gender is a, a very important factor that we are we are talking about because well, uh, according to our uh, research and our um, like conclusion, we have been talking about the uh, training, which does not uh, really like talk about the gender, uh, which means. No matter if you are a man or a female, uh, you are you you can just uh, learn something from us, and you can just you know uh, learn to plant the trees well. So I don't think it is a matter of gender. I think uh, we have to be uh, equalized uh, regarding ma male and females. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question about your timeline, um, and it's it's quite ambitious. Um, I'm wondering if you feel that you could really finish within that one year. What, what if it, you know, if, if there, if your timeline gets extended, have you thought about maybe some contingency plans? I'm just curious of, of how much thought you've put into the projected timeline. Uh, so actually, uh, when we set this timeline, we are actually considering the first year preparation phase. So uh, usually for a palm tree to grow, it will take up to three years, right? So the first year we will accumulate uh, the found we needed and also to start uh, this logging business and try to make as much as revenue as we can, providing, it, uh, providing this amount of money so that we can uh, continue in the second or third year. Thank you. We don't have another question. I have a sort of related follow-up question. You mentioned that you would be training the farmers to defend on human rights, um, uh, but um, <clears throat> I think the your case study showed that Amnesty International actually showed there was a lack of labor rights, particularly related to women on a plantation. So maybe you could go back and address that question. But related to the human rights aspect. Yeah, so as for our training, um, so I think it's that because uh, we want to make our uh, the project we are proposing in line with our clients' value. Uh, so one of our clients' uh, dedication is that they tr trying to use free training courses uh, to. Uh, provide to like uh, help other people uh, to defend the human rights, and so we want to uh, we want our clients to also expand their uh, service to this project, since that we know in the Indonesia there's like so many uh, human rights problem and also the inequality problem. So we can like train our client to make them also be responsible for uh, doing those things in the Indonesia. I see we have, Dan, you have two uh, questions. Um, would you like to cover those? Um, yeah, to back on the timeline, following up on Earl's question is, does that timeline, you know, are you really factoring in the effort required to get startup funds to acquire land and to get all the permits required to start cutting trees? Uh, can you turn to the last slide? Sure. And Tim, this will be our last question, and then we'll wrap it up after this. Okay. Uh, so actually, uh, in this uh, in this project timeline, I didn't include it uh, in this, uh, but. Uh, uh, remember that uh, during the fundraising process uh, and between between it and the logging camp construct, uh, uh, 
uh, I actually wanted to put in into this acquisition of land and print meeting, but you see, uh, so actually, oh, we want to do it, but we didn't include it in our timeline. Okay, thanks. Awesome. So we're going to wrap it up now, guys. Thank you, Zoomsburg. 